We begin with a terrible reminder of how close Iraq may be to the brink of civil war. It was mid-afternoon in the Iraqi capital today, just as Friday prayer services were drawing to a close when three attackers dressed as women blew themselves up at a revered Shiite mosque. The result was the deadliest attack of the year. At least 79 people were killed, more than 160 others injured. It is also the second day in a row that insurgents have targeted Shiite worshippers, and the attack has stoked a growing sense of anger and fear among so many people in Iraq. We begin in Baghdad with ABC's David Curley. It was a particularly diabolical bombing, timed for maximum effect as hundreds of worshippers were leaving this well-known Shia mosque. With so many dead and wounded to carry away, wheelbarrows became gurneys. Water ran red, and the call went out for blood donations. Uh, I saw a woman blow herself up at the front door, says this man. Witnesses tell ABC News that as people poured out of the Baratha mosque, the first of three bombers, dressed in women's robes, detonated an explosive vest. The faithful raced back into the mosque, and in the panic, two more bombers were able to slip into the compound with the crowd where they exploded their bombs. Part of one wall was blown away. What appeared to be explosive residue covered another. My arm was injured, says this man. The government needs to hit these terrorists with an iron fist. The government had received intelligence about possible bombings. In fact, this morning, Iraqis were warned not to gather in large crowds if they went to the market or as they came out of the mosques from Friday prayers. With the goal of igniting all-out civil war, insurgents have recently targeted numerous Shia religious sites. Why this mosque? The imam here is also a Shia political leader and a member of the National Assembly. Despite the rising religious violence, there are hopeful moments. At least one of the men in line to give blood for the Shia victims was a Sunni. I feel honored, he says, to help my injured Iraqi brothers. David Curley, ABC News, Baghdad. And Fareed Zakari of Newsweek International and an ABC News consultant joins us now and put this attack today in some context. How inflammatory will this be for Shiite Muslims? It's quite dangerous because this is not just a religious site, it's also a political site. The mosque is allied with, in fact, the headquarters of one of the largest Shiite political parties, actually the most important party that's opposing the current prime minister and asking him to step down. So it's mixed up within Shiite uh, internal politics. But the biggest danger is that while leaders will urge restraint, this kind of very emotional violence will mean they will lose their followers. That is to say that this goes beyond political. It becomes personal. It becomes you killed my brother and I'm going to kill yours. And that's what happened in Lebanon in the 1970s. That's, that's how civil wars start. And this is becoming increasingly difficult to urge restraint when there is no government to come in and thoroughly investigate and take matters into its own hands. That's the key, Elizabeth. The problem here is that you have a, a security vacuum. You don't have, nothing is working in Iraq. There isn't a Ministry of Defense. There isn't a police force of any significance. So people are freelancing. They're taking security into their own affairs. What you're seeing in Iraq is the privatization of security, a very dangerous situation, and one that the American ambassador has been trying to, to remedy by urging the Iraqis they've got to come together and form a government. But even with this uh, violence taking place, they still haven't done that. Still haven't. All right. Fareed Zakaria, thank you. One more note about Iraq. The deaths of four U.S. service members were announced today. Twenty-one have been killed so far this week.